Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are in class with Jonah. Lessons from a Renewed Rebel. In this session, we'll be looking at Jonah chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, The Return Ride. Listen, God never forsakes his children, even when we disobey him. He wants us back, and he's willing to do whatever it takes to wake us up and to bring us back. Look at chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. <clears throat> then Jonah prayed to the Lord, for his God, from the fish's belly. And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me, out of the belly of shale I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your billows and your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The water surrounded me and even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord, my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. First, we need to get alone with God. Verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. That's chapter 1, verse 17. A great fish. <clears throat> There's much discussion about the nature of this fish. Was it a whale, a, great, a large shark, or a large fish? We'll have to wait until we get to heaven to find out for sure. But the type of fish isn't as important as the role of the fish. In reality, God used the sea as his for correction. The fish served another purpose. The fish gave protection from the sea. Jonah was in the belly of the fish. God intended to use Jonah. He had no intention of killing Jonah. If he wanted Jonah dead, God could have left him in the ocean and sent a shark. He wasn't finished with Jonah yet. It seems that some time passed before Jonah was rescued by the fish. You see that in verse 3 and also in verses 5 and 6. Your billows and waves passed over me. Water surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down. And then God rescued him by sending the big fish. So the fish was protection from the sea. The fish was also transportation from the ship to the land. The three days and three nights probably has nothing to do with the speed of the fish, but the time Jonah needed to get right with God. When Jonah was ready to obey God, the fish was ready to release him. God had a specific place where he wanted Jonah and the prophet wasn't there. So God sent the taxi to bring him back. And also that fish provided sanctuary with the Lord. First chapter 2 verse 1 reads, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. What is a sanctuary? Well, what makes a church auditorium, a prayer closet, or even a fish's belly a sanctuary? It's where you encounter the Lord. You know you've encountered God when he has your attention. And when you enter his presence, you will not leave the same. Think about what happened inside that fish. In the fish... Jonah renewed his dependence on God. 
I cried out to the Lord. I remembered the Lord. In the fish, God removed all the distractions. He had Jonah's full attention. In the fish, God, Jonah responded to God willingly. I will pay what I have vowed. Jonah got alone with God and all other competing voices became quiet. And the voice of God became loud and clear. Listen, if you've wandered from God and need to renew your faith, get alone with him. Find a private place to meet with God. And then second, we need to listen to God's voice. While praying, Jonah quoted from the Psalms. He, he allowed God's word to permeate his thoughts. There are at least five references to the Psalms in Jonah's prayer. Waves and billows have gone over me. That's, that's uh, in, in verse 3, that's from Psalm 42 in verse 7. I am cut off from before your eyes. That's from Psalm 31, verse 22. <clears throat> the waters have come up to my neck. Psalm 69, verse 1. I have hated those who regard idols. Psalm 31, verse 6. Salvation belongs to the Lord. That's Psalm 3, verse 8. That's all there in those first 10 verses of chapter 2 of Jonah. Why was the word of God so important to Jonah's spiritual recovery? Let me tell you why. God speaks to our heart through his word. That's the whole value of memorizing scripture. Psalm 119, verse 11, thy word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. God guides our thoughts by his thoughts. Jonah's thoughts were out of sync with God's thoughts. Scripture guided Jonah to acknowledge and understand God's thoughts about him. God cleanses our soul with his word. Jonah's rebellious heart became responsive. God's word will guide us back to him if we will follow it. Over a hundred years ago, much of northern Michigan was entirely new country, covered with dense forests. The best woodsman was liable to lose his way unless he carried a pocket compass. A settler of those days tells this story. He said, one day I had been walking in the woods when, though I could not see the sun or sky, I knew by the settling darkness that night was coming on. And and started as I thought for home. I was so certain of my direction that for some time I did not look at my compass. On doing so, however, I was greatly surprised to find that whereas I thought I was going east, in reality I was bound due west. Not only was I surprised, but I was so sure of my own judgment and so disgusted with my compass that I raised my arm to throw it away. And then pausing, I thought, you have never lied to me yet. And I'll trust you once more. I followed it and came out all right. The Bible is a compass that has guided millions to heaven. Some would throw it away, but those who follow it always come out safely. And then third, we need to pour out our hearts to God. When you come to the place that you know God has your attention and you know that you must return, what do you say to him? Well, here are four responses <clears throat> that Jonah made concerning God's correction. First, Jonah recognized God's hand at work. He said, you cast me into the deep and I have been cast out of your sight. Notice the you and your. Jonah 
made connection between his disobedience and God's correction. Second, Jonah turned his focus back to God. Second part of verse 4. Jonah added, Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. Backsliding, it's taking your eyes off God. Repentance is turning back toward God. And then third, Jonah acknowledged God's compassion. You have brought up my life from the pit. It's interesting that Jonah acknowledged God's deliverance and faith. He had not yet experienced it. He was still in the sea in the belly of that fish. And then fourth, Jonah renewed his commitment to God. He promised, I will pay what I have vowed. Repentance without obedience ends in failure. True repentance requires change. If we experience our shepherd's touch daily in our lives, we will recognize his voice when he warns us of danger. If we don't spend time with him daily, we will soon be spending time with the enemy because we won't be able to distinguish the voice. You have a great day.